Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about a drama film called The Source from 2011. Enjoy your viewing. The movie takes place in our time, in a small village between the Middle East and North Africa. Since ancient times, the custom has been preserved here, and only women carry water located high on a hill. Going up and down a steep mountain path with heavy buckets is not easy, especially for pregnant women. Pregnant Esmeralda slips on the way and falls on the trail. Blood runs down her leg, and she realizes with horror that she has lost her baby. Her friend Layla tries to comfort her. This is not the first time this has happened. Many women in the village have lost a child on this mountain trail, and some women have even become infertile afterwards. At the same time, another girl in the village gives birth to a healthy boy. All the women of the village celebrate this joyful event with songs and dances. Sad Esmeralda, along with Layla and the other women, returns with water and finds herself right in the middle of the celebration. Layla's mother-in-law sees that her daughter-in-law is sad and invites her to join them in the dance. Layla grew up in another much larger village where electricity and water were installed long ago. This all looks so wild to her that she can't stand it anymore and shouts that it's time to end this horrible medieval tradition and finally solve the problem with the water supply. The other women look at the foreigner with bewilderment but continue to celebrate the birth of the child. At home, Layla refuses to eat dinner and falls fast asleep, refusing to engage in lovemaking with her husband. The next day, while the women of the village are washing in the bathhouse, Layla brings up the lack of water in their homes again, while the government has long since installed water and electricity in the nearby larger settlements. Fatima tells her daughter-in-law to shut up, as the women of the village have been fetching water from the spring for hundreds of years, and this tradition cannot be broken. However, Layla does not relent and says that this ancient custom is too expensive for the women and their children. She says that the men could find a way to convince the government that they have finally solved the water issue. While the rest of the women are silent, an elderly and respected woman, Fusil, tells us that she has been pregnant 19 times. She lost 12 children, two of whom died on this cursed mountain. Fusil supports Layla who suggests that they declare a boycott of men and not engage in love affairs with them until they find a way to resolve the issue. Fatima cries out that this is a great sin, because men will not forgive their wives for such behavior and will take out their anger on their children. Fatima leaves the bathhouse with several outraged women, but some of those present agree to join Layla and Fusil. The men of the village learn from Fatima about the women's boycott that Layla has started and are very indignant at this disrespectful attitude of a foreigner. Not all men agree to tolerate this outrage. Some take their wives by force, while others beat those who do not respect the customs. Fatima orders him to divorce the wayward girl, but the guy loves his wife and realizes how difficult it is for her and others on that mountain. The village is often visited by tourists who pay a lot of money for local beauties to perform traditional dances and songs for them. The women dress in beautiful outfits and then start dancing and singing in their native language. The tourists do not understand what the local beauties are singing about, but the men of the village can hear perfectly well that the women have changed the words of the songs and are singing about how hard they have to live on this mountain, and they ask for tourists' money to build a water supply system if the government does not want to help them. However, the men ignore their wives' words. After a few days, most of those who have declared a boycott are ready to give up, because the men are putting too much pressure on them and turning their lives into a nightmare. Fusil and Layla try their best to encourage the others, because if they back down now, their unborn children will continue to be unhappy. Sami decides to help Layla and teaches her to read the Quran, because the Imam and Sheikh will probably try to insult her because she is the organizer of the boycott, and the girl must have ironclad arguments to support her position. The men of the village are thinking about what to do in this situation. Sami proposes to build a water supply system at the expense of tourists, to which others shout that he should not teach his wife to read, but show her her place. This provokes a violent reaction from the guy, after which a fight breaks out in the room. Soon after, the guy who was going to marry Sami's sister refuses to do so because of the boycott of Layla and her friends. The unhappy bride attacks Layla, who has ruined her future marriage and her entire life. Layla feels terrible after what happened, but she is not ready to give up. Sami goes to the city to see a government official and asks him to build a water supply system in their village. However, the official replies that the government has no money as usual, so it will not be possible to change the situation in the coming years. His father advises Sami to divorce his wife, otherwise he will get into a lot of trouble because of the girl and her boycott. Sami asks Layla to stop their senseless boycott, but his wife continues to stand her ground. At night, while everyone is sleeping, Layla writes a message at the entrance to the village to the villagers and visitors about the boycott of the men. Soon, a journalist, Sofiane, arrives in the village and settles in one of the houses for a small fee. 
When Sammy learns of the journalist's arrival, he asks him to write a report about the plight of the water supply in their village. However, Sofian says that he does not write about politics, but studies insects. These words make Sammy angry. Sofian is waiting for Layla on the road to the spring and wants to talk to the girl. In the past, the two of them lived in the same village and hoped to get married one day. However, their parents told Sofian to marry a rich bride, which made Layla very sad. A year later, the girl married Sammy and moved to this village. Sofian's wife had recently died, so he came here to see Layla because he still loves her. However, the girl refuses to talk to the guy and says that everything is in the past and now she loves her husband. After that, she runs home. Sammy works as a teacher in a town near the village. The school principal calls him to his office and threatens to fire him if the boycott, which has a very negative impact on the younger generation, does not end. Sami learns from the neighbors that Layla has been seeing Sofian and forces her to confess that the two were in love with each other in their youth. This shocks Sami, as he was sure that his wife had no men before him. Layla asks him to forgive her for not telling the truth and assures him that she loves only him. The women of the village write an inscription on a poster. Your hearts are as dry and empty as this well, and attach it to the dried up well. At night, the men burn the poster in anger, believing that their wives have completely lost respect for them. Many of them are going to divorce their disobedient wives and marry more compliant girls to punish their disobedient wives. Sami still cannot forgive Layla. He finds Sofian and threatens him with a knife. Sami demands to know why he came here. The journalist admits that he had hoped that Layla still loved him, but when he met the girl, he saw how much she loved her husband. At night, while everyone is sleeping, Sammy brings home water from a mountain spring to make his wife's life a little easier. A few days later, the harvest festival begins in the neighboring town. The men of the village realize that their wives will tell everyone about their difficult situation with water, thus humiliating their husbands. The men hire local bandits to prevent their wives from attending the festival. The bandits intercept all the women of the village on their way to the city so that they will not be seen at the festival. The men of the village compete with the inhabitants of other settlements and present their traditional dance. Suddenly, their wives appear, singing again about the difficult situation with water in the village and asking them to finally solve the issue with the water supply. It turns out that the women were prepared for the bandits' attack and sent their children instead, wearing special outfits. At Sammy's request, Sofian also comes to the party. After seeing what he saw, he finally agrees to write a report about what is happening in the village. The journalist's article causes real anger in the parliament. The government decides to quietly and quickly resolve the issue with the water supply before women from all over the country join the boycott in the village. A satisfied Layla hugs her husband tightly. A government official soon arrives in the village to resolve the water supply issue as soon as possible. Sofian gathers her things and leaves for home, and Layla gives him a flower as a token of her gratitude for his gender. At night, Sammy and Layla are passionately engaged in an activity they haven't had in so long. Soon, clean water is flowing into every home, bringing joyful smiles to the faces of the villagers. If you have watched the video so far, you should know that I am happy to have viewers like you. Thank you for watching to the end. Subscribe to the channel and follow the news. Klonsak Recapped was with you. See you soon.